This is Craig with Karshalton Advisory. In this video, we're going to work through the second half of the Objective 3.3 practice tasks for the Microsoft Office Specialist 2016 Study Guide for Microsoft Excel Expert Exam. Let's get started. So with these practice tasks, we're going to be working on the Accounts Receivable Aging Worksheet of our Excel Expert 3.3 workbook. So what we're going to be doing is populating the date column, which is this one here, with formulas that are recurring dates that are 60 work days after the dates in the invoice column. So here's our invoice column. Now, I, I just want to point out that they specified that they want to have a, dates that are work days after the dates, or, or typically what I'd hear them called here in North America is business days. So that is days not including Saturdays and Sundays when businesses aren't open. Now, Excel has given us a function to make this a little easier and that is the workday function. So we can integrate that into cell D4 by changing, uh, by entering workday, and I'm just going to tab to bring the rest of this in. Now the workday function is going to require two bits of data. The first is the start date. So in that case, we're going to use the value in cell C4, just to the left. I can arrow over to that. Next, it requires the number of days. So this is how many days after this value do we want Excel to display for us? In this case, they've given us in the practice task request a value of 60 days. Now, remember, these aren't actually going to be 60 calendar days. These are only going to be 60 business days. So this is excluding um, weekends, the Saturdays and the Sundays. Now, you'll notice there is a third variable we can enter in here, and that's holidays. So if you want to uh, make Excel adjust for holidays that are in your particular area, you can actually type in those dates. So for example, uh, where I'm at in Alberta today is actually a holiday. It's called Family Day. And that's a different holiday than or what in other provinces here in Canada. So I could type in today's date. And then Excel isn't going to include that as a work day. So the due date would actually kind of be pushed one more day into the future than it would be otherwise. However, we're just going to leave this as is because that's what was requested in the, in the problem. Um, you'll notice here we do have a constant in a formula, which uh, you know by now that I don't like. And at the end of the uh, episode, we will fix that. But for now, we will leave that in. We'll hit enter here. And sure enough, it has told us that our due date on this particular invoice is going to be April 5th, 2017. We can click and drag to fill this down. Um, because we use relative references in our formula, it's going to continue to look to the corresponding value in column C here every time, but still add the 60. So that task is done. Let's wrap up our final task here. Now, lastly, what they've asked us to do is to calculate the value in column E here, which is going to show the number of business days between the due date and between the date that they are tracking this, which is going to be the 15th of May 2017. So there is a close cousin to our workday function, and that's called network days. Okay, and what that's going to do is, is actually calculate the number of business days between those two values. So let's start with an equals, NET, and sure enough, we have network days pop up here in our autocomplete section. We'll tab to integrate that. We want to enter in our start date, okay, which is this value here. And so effectively what our due date was, we're going to have that in first. Second, we want to have our end date, which is going to be the, the date here that the individual is working on this workbook. Now here's the trick. Um, we want the column D value to be relative. So as we fill this down, it's always going to be looking one cell to the left here. However, we want this B1 value to stay locked. We don't want it to move in relation as we fill down. So in order to do that, we're going to use our F4 in order to make that an absolute reference. Now, lastly, it does allow us to add the holidays in here again. Uh, so if there's particular holidays you wanted to exclude from the count, you can do that here. Uh, we've not been required to do that in this task. So I'm just going to use a close parenthesis to fill that in. And now we have our past due days of 29. So let's fill that in and make sure we did that correctly. Perfect. So all of these are under uh, 29 days or less. And I can double check this and sure enough it's using cell D or column D here, but still locked 
in B1 at this point. Excellent. So that, that officially wraps up the practice task for objective 3.3. 3. However, I want to fix these values in column D because we have a constant in this formula. So we are going to um, add a value here into, let's use cell D1. And we're going to call this, um, we'll call this receivables due. I'll slowly type that in. And we want them to be due in 60 days. And so what we'll do now, we'll get rid of this 60. Instead, we'll use the value in cell E1. We will make that an absolute reference by using F4. So now when I drag this in, first off, you'll notice nothing's changed. However, what if instead of receivables due in 60, what if we want to get more aggressive with our receivables? Uh, what we can do is... Let's say we want everything due in 45 days. Okay, bring that cash in a little sooner. So now all I have to do is change this one value in cell E1, and now the due date has changed on all these values. So remember, best practice, never have a, a constant inside a formula. Um, just bring it out, make an absolute reference, and then it makes it easy for you just in the future. This is Craig with Carshalton Advisory. Thanks for watching. I look forward to working with you on Objective 3.4.